one doing tonight? Good. You know, this morning, the service was so good. You know, I'm... You know, and I know this is everybody's sentiments. They wanted to, we, we just really need the Lord in our lives. We just really need the Lord in our lives, you guys. And I think, you know, we get up every morning because we're so used to getting up every single morning and not even putting him on our mind. You know, the first thing we think about is everything that we have to do. But the blessing is that, he, by his grace, wakes us up every single day. It has nothing to do with you and everything to do with him. Because he is a God that loves you so much, you have no idea how much you are loved. So don't forget that as soon as your feet hit the floor in the morning, give him all praise, honor, and glory. And what I'm learning is to not only praise him in the morning when my feet hit the floor, but to thank him as I go throughout the day because he's moving in my life. I'm a part of his plan and purpose. He's not a part of mine. So, you know, let's give him all praise, honor, and glory. Okay. And we can do that right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's amazing to me that once people start coming to church, they decide to get saved, which is a good thing. They're coming to church. They get baptized. They start seeking God. That was me also at one time. I was straddling the fence, though, lacking commitment to, pick, uh, to, to picking up my cross daily to follow God until I had an experience in a relationship where I experienced deep emotional pain. And from that experience, actually that was my wake up call, I decided to surrender to God. Why? Because I had tried it my way and it wasn't working. Have you tried it your way? Is it working? Okay, now, it was time for me to look for a better way to live and to seek after God's way of life. Best thing that could have ever happened to me. The best thing that could ever happen to me. You know, it's like, and I don't know why this just came to mind. It's like eating a, a good basket of fried chicken. You know, God tastes that good. So, <laughs> what I've come to realize in this journey is that God des God's desire is for all of us to come to the full knowledge of who he is. He wants us to appreciate him, to have a relationship with him, and to seek him as he gives us wisdom and guidance, understanding and discernment. That's the Holy Spirit's job, really. 1 Corinthians 13.2 tells us that human knowledge apart from God is flawed. The Bible has also referred to it as worthless because it isn't tempered by love. If we could just get the love piece right, if we could just get the love piece right, that is God's command to us. He says to first love him, but then we are to love one another. So if we could get the love piece right, look how God could move. What I've learned is the knowledge man possesses tends to make him proud. Knowledge puffs him up. But love builds us up. Did I get the little heart right? <laughs> okay. 1 Corinthians 8, 1 through 3, and, you know, I'm taking this from the New Living Translation because I love it. I know Bishop doesn't, but I do. Okay, and it says, <laughs> while knowledge makes us feel important, it is love that strengthens the church. 
Did you see that this morning? Ooh. Anyone who claims to know all the answers doesn't really know very much. But the person who loves God is the one who recognizes. God will, I'm sorry, God will recognize. So let's pray. Oh, Father God, I just come before you right now in prayer, and I ask your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to just guide me in this message tonight. So I'm praying and I'm asking in your holy name, let the meditation of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, Lord. And I just thank you for allowing everyone to come out tonight safely. I pray that, you know, the word that you have given me that I've written down on this paper, Lord, will be something that will touch the heart and stir the heart of someone that's here tonight. I ask this in the almighty name of my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Um, my message tonight um, is on, uh, it's called Seeking the kingdom of God and the knowledge of who he is. Do you know him? Do you really know him? You know, I ask myself that a lot. And some people think that they do, but we don't know him like we should know him. Um, the scripture I, told, I chose tonight, and you can turn to it right now, but I'm not going to read it yet. Um, is in Luke, Luke 8, 4 through 15. So if you have your Bibles, you can go ahead and turn to that. Many times when Jesus spoke, you know, when he speaks in the word, he tells stories. And uh, he talks, he tells us stories on how to live, how to love. He also teaches us how to glorify God. His stories... Be, you know, may become a challenge uh, to our hearts, but, you know, they're there to strengthen us and to give us faith and to give us hope. His stories also reveal, and, you know, that's why I titled it The Kingdom of God. His stories also reveals the secrets of his kingdom. But people have a difficult time sometimes knowing that it's not just God you need to search for. It's not just Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We also need to search for the kingdom because that's where it has principles and it teaches us how to live and what we should do and how we should interact with one another. And most of all, it teaches us how to love. I love that. So, in this scripture, God uses what parable teaching. And parable, parables were a way for Jesus to conceal and reveal truth concerning mysteries of the kingdom of God. And this parable is about the teacher who sowed the seed. And Jesus starts off telling the story about a farmer. So you can turn to that now, and then I'm going to start to read. So Jesus said, one day Jesus told this story to a large crowd that had gathered from many towns to hear him. A farmer went out to plant some seed. And as he scattered it across the field, some seed fell on footpath where it was stepped on, and the birds came and they ate it. Other seed fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. This seed began to grow, but soon it withered and died for a lack of moisture. Other seed fell along thorns that shot up and choked out the tender blades. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil this seed grew and produced a crop 100 times as much as has been planted. When he had said this, he called out 
anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand. And he's telling us that today. Uh, you know, I read this parable and it reminded me of so many things. But what was interesting was that, you know, as Jesus was saying these things, his disciples did not understand what he was talking about. They didn't understand. And what Jesus did was, well, actually, you know, what that told me was, or actually it made me feel good if you, if you want my honest opinion, because what it helped me to realize is that they are not perfect, we are not perfect. We're not going to get everything right. Am I correct? Okay, but thank God we have a God who knows all. He is not only a good God, but he is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. He's omniscient. He knows all things. So we don't hide anything from God. Don't think that you're hiding anything from him. You're not hiding anything from him. You're just fooling yourselves. So anyway, Jesus proceeded to explain. And um, let's go to verse number nine. His disciples asked him, what's the story? What does the story mean? And then he replied, you have been permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God. Now, he's telling his disciples that. I don't know if any of you have ever read this and read it slowly. He is revealing the knowledge of the kingdom of God to them. Okay? And they, I'm not sure, are listening. So he replied, you have been permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of God. I just wanted to read that again. But I am using these stories to conceal everything about it from outsiders so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. So not everybody that hears God's word is going to understand God's word, nor does he want to reveal it to them. And He's going to explain that to us. But he goes on to say, they see what I do, but they don't see. They hear what I say, but they don't understand. So Jesus goes on to explain the story and the meaning of this. He says, this is the meaning of the story. The seed is God's message. The seed that fell on the hard path represent those who hear the message, but then the devil comes and steals it away and prevents them from believing and being saved. Then he says, the rocky soil, because what happens in this parable is that there are four um, uh, soils that the Lord talks about. So the rocky soil represents those who hear the message with joy, but like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go very deep. They believe for a while, but they wilt when the hot winds of testing blow. And then there's the thorny ground. It represents those who hear and accept the message, but all too quickly, the message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. And so they never grow into maturity. But the good soil represents honest, good-hearted people who hear God's message, they cling to it, and steadily produce a huge harvest. Okay, and I'm going to stop right there. Okay, there are four types of people mentioned in this uh, parable because the soil represents uh, 
actually people's heart. It actually represents your heart. And, you know, the thing that I come to realize about God is that God looks at the heart of a man. He doesn't look at the outside. A lot of people believe that he does, but he doesn't. He looks at the heart. God examines your heart. He can tell whether or not you're going to follow him. He can tell what you're going to do even before you do it. So you need to keep that in mind. He examines the heart. So let's talk about these four people that he talked about. First person was a pack people. Second person people were uh, rocky people. Uh, the third were thorny people. And then the last were good soil people. Well, the path people, they remind me of some of the religious leaders um, that refused to believe God's message. You know, as you read the Bible, there was a lot of religious uh, leaders that did not believe God. They didn't want to follow God. They wanted to do things their way. Their hearts were dead. So their eyes and their ears were closed. The word was never able to take root with the path people. And they kind of, the sea sort of set on the ground, on the path, and then the birds came down and took the seed. And you know, when I think about soil, you know, which is our heart, you know, the only way that God is going to be able to change us is for us to have a heart change. And if you don't have a heart change, then you're in trouble. Seriously, you are. The devil comes in and he snatches all that away. And an example of that, because I was speaking of religious leaders, is the Pharisees. They knew how to quote the Bible. They knew everything about the law. But guess what they missed? They missed experiencing God. They missed experiencing him. And that's what we don't want to have happen to us. We don't want to miss experiencing God, Lord Jesus Christ, or the Holy Spirit. They never moved beyond their intellectual knowledge so that they could experience God. So I'm going to ask you to turn to Hebrews 3.12. And the reason they didn't was because of this. 3.12 tells us, Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. Let me read that one more time. Be careful, brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, which will turn you away from the living God. Okay, so that was the path people. The rock people, like many in the crowd who followed Jesus, now they did follow him, they believed his message but never got around to doing anything about it. They believed for a while but they were not rooted. And that's what has to happen for us. The only way you're going to know the Lord is to get rooted in his word. The only way he's going to be able to work in our life is for you to be rooted in his word. The only way you are going to know how to live and, and have a successful life, that's what it says in the Bible, is to get rooted in his word. You can't always go by what somebody else says. You have to know the word for yourself. And when you know the word, then God will continue to reveal the word to you. And then that's where the authority and the power comes in. Well, the rock people didn't like the fact that... Um, you know, they had to go through changes. 
And as soon as suffering came into their lives, then they just gave up. They just gave up. The deepest walk with God comes in times of suffering. I know that doesn't sound good. I know it doesn't feel good. But that's what I have come to learn. When I have suffered and I have gone through something, then most people, like myself, want to seek God. Am I correct? All right. And that's what we should do. Because he says, if you draw near to me, I will, not, I will draw near to you, James 4, 8. He says, if you abide in me, I will abide in you. So what is he telling us? That we need to lean on him. No one here can help me but him. The thorn patch people, overcome by worries, and they're lured by materialism, and they've left no room in their life for God, there's deception there. They've gotten caught up in the pleasures of this world, and, you know, that's happened to a lot of us. I was one of those people, too, at one time, you know, where... I had to have all these outfits, and I wanted this beautiful home, and had to have all these cars. You know, you just kind of get caught up in that, but that's all temporary. It's not gonna last. It's not gonna last. Life does not consist of abundance. And this is what 1 John 2.15 says. Can you turn there? Or I can just read it for you. Life does not consist of abundance. Stop loving this evil world and all that it offers you. For when you love the world, you show that you do not have the love of the Father in you. So come out of the world. That's the only way we are going to be able to have a life that is pleasing to God and that's successful. You have to come out of the world. So what happened with them is all the water in that soil got sucked up. And then there's the good soil people. They follow Jesus no matter, they follow Jesus no matter what the cost. And that's what God desires. He desires for all of us to turn into good soil people and to bear fruit. Matthew 5:15. We are to remember when the light, which, should, which is the truth about Jesus, is clear to us, then it is our responsibility to allow our light to shine that will help others. Our witness for Christ should be public, and we should not hide it. Okay? Parables show who believes and who does not believe. You have to have the spirit inside of you in order to understand God. So as I've gone through those four soils, what type of soil are you? Have you ever reflected back on that and thought about it? What type of soil are you? Well, in this scripture, there was also some principles and points. And one of the uh, points is that God is scattering the seed, and the seed that he's scattering is the word of God. The seed is the word. And, you know, it made me think of how people come to church every Sunday, and they sit in the pews, and they listen to the word. Some people will hear the word, 
okay, and respond to it, receive it, live the way they're supposed to. And then there's other people that it goes in this ear and out the other. A lot of people want to, a lot of people believe God, but they don't want to follow God. Do you find that? Okay. The only way you are going to know the Lord is for you to read his word. And I don't mean just every now and then. It has to become a daily practice. You're not going to know who he is just because you've come to church and you've gotten saved and um, you're in church every Sunday. You have to know the God that you want to spend eternity with. I want to know the God that I spend eternity with, don't you? Okay. Jesus is not just referring to the word, which is the Bible. He is also referring to the kingdom of God, which is in the world. When he says secrets of the kingdom, as we continue to feed on his word, he will teach us the secrets of the kingdom. Jesus is already here among us, trying to produce good soil people. <laughs> so what we need to do is align our hearts with him. And that has been a prayer of mine a lot. Lord, put me in alignment with your will. Not my will be done, but your will be done. Because I know then I'm on the right path. The key to getting God's priorities right are to understand the kingdom of God. You have got to understand the kingdom of God. Now, this story is also told in Matthew 13. I don't know if you guys know, it's told in Mark, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. But what I noticed when I was reading Mark 13 was the word understanding. The word understanding uh, is listed seven times. Verse 9 says, anyone who is willing to hear should listen and understand. Verse 11, you have been permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others have not. He was talking to his disciples at the time, but that also applies to us. Verse 12, those that are open to my teaching, more understanding will be given, and they will have an abundance of knowledge. The good soil people is who I call them. Verse 13, they heard what I say, but they don't really hear and they don't understand. Verse 14, you will hear my words, but you will not understand. Those were the rocky people. He keeps saying understand. You're not going to understand. Verse 15, they have closed their eyes. They cannot see. Their ears can't hear, and their hearts cannot understand. Those were the thorny people. Don't want to be like those people. Verse 19, those who hear the good news about the kingdom don't understand it. I, both rocky. They're the rocky and the thorn. You can read the word of God. You can't read the God, word of God just once a week and think that you understand it. You have got to read it continuously. Okay, Matthew 6.33 said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If we do our part to make our relationship with God our highest priority, he will do his part to provide for every need. And that is something we can count on. We are not to live in continual worry. We are to live a life that is pleasing to him. So he tells us to seek first the kingdom of God. Do you know that that is a divine command? He has told all of us as human beings to seek first the kingdom of God. Because what that tells us is that there are commandments that we need to obey. Did you know that? 
The word seek means, in Hebrew, to search out by any method. And in the Greek, it means to seek to find, to pursue, to study it, to explore it. You need to understand it. You need to learn it. You need to dedicate yourself to it. If you really want to know God, and I know that it's not always easy, because we put a lot of things before God on a regular basis all the time. We have to make time for him if we, if we want him to make time for us, right? So in Jeremiah 29, 13, the Lord invites you to seek him and find him. And when you search for him with all your heart, just like I told you earlier, if you abide in me, I will abide in you and you will bear much fruit. You should be kingdom-minded at all times. Whatever you ask God for, you should be kingdom-minded. <laughs> um, I was watching a video uh, not too long ago, and I know you guys know Miles Monroe. But anyway, um, his son was at the age where he was, um, was able to get married and had gone to a party, I guess is their custom, you know, where there were women there that, you know, he could basically, you know, choose, you know, for a wife. So his dad went up to him and says, what kind of woman are you looking for? And he says, kingdom minded. <laughs> so, you know, I just thought, oh my goodness, that really was good because we don't think along those lines. I mean, and that applies to anything in our lives. You know, whenever we have decisions that we need to make, we need to make sure that we are kingdom-minded, that we're going to God and we're talking to him first. Not our friends, but we're talking to God first. God will not reveal anything to you that you don't ask for. That's why he tells us to ask and we shall receive, to seek and we will find. Knock, and he will open the door for us. Those words are powerful, and they work. Listen and observe him and how he works. He will open our eyes and show us how he is working in other people's lives. And we talked about that today with the testimonies. Look at how God is working in other people's lives. He's not just working in your life. He's working in everybody's life, every single day. And when you come to know God, you will recognize who he is, how he's working, and what he's doing for other people. He also tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5.17 to pray without ceasing. I want to know the God that I'm going to be spending eternity with. I said that earlier. I have come to realize nothing is yours until you understand it. Even though we get the information from the Bible, it doesn't always become a revelation. Am I correct? Now remember, don't forget, we have an enemy. One of the greatest revelations about the devil that I learned is that he is a liar. The devil doesn't want us to get it. He just doesn't want us to get it, especially uh, the secrets to the kingdom. Because then he starts to lose control of us. So the last two scriptures of Luke 7 and 18, for everything that is hidden or secrets will eventually be brought to light and made plain to all. So be sure to pay attention to what you hear. To those who are open to my teaching, more understanding will be given. This is what the Lord has told us. But for those who are not listening, even what they think they have will be taken away from them. And then verse 18 is a principle for us. Applying God's word will help us to grow. This is a principle for your physical, mental, and spiritual life. An example would be um, a muscle. You know, when you're, you're going to the gym, you're working out, you're getting stronger. But if you don't use that muscle, what happens to it? 
It becomes weak and it becomes flabby. Okay? So, <laughs> growing in knowledge and the understanding of God is just not a one-time event. It's a lifelong pursuit, and that's something that I decided to do. I decided that the best thing for me and the love and the joy that I feel and the peace that God gives me is when I'm in pursuit. And so I pray you will be too. So let's bow our heads and pray, and I'm done. Lord, we pray right now for your divine wisdom, your guidance, understanding, and discernment. Let us not harden our hearts, Lord, but have good hearts planted in good soil that we may bear fruit. Lord, I just pray for everyone that, you know, has come out tonight that um, as they travel to go home, Father God, that you will release your angels to have charge over them, to watch over them, protect them, and keep them safe. And Lord, you know... Um, as they go throughout the week, you are a good God. You know, um, I know you will hear their cries and their prayers, God. And so I'm praying that you will supply all that they need according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.